Trey Songs has branded himself as someone who enjoys the ladies. Whether he's stealing your girl or making sure the neighbors know his name, the Virginia native has won over his global audience since the start of his career. He's also been involved with some of the industry's most beautiful women, from Lauren London to Lori Harvey. But through the years, the focus has shifted from his music projects to his off-the-stage antics. It seems like he's constantly in the news. There appears to be a dark cloud hanging over Trey, and it's about time we dive deep into all of the allegations that have followed him throughout his career. The following story has more twists and turns than a roller coaster, and you're going to need something to munch on. So be sure to head on over to rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of lemon pepper beef jerky, buffalo wing popcorn, and green apple licorice. Of course, this video wouldn't be complete without a backstory. Tremaine Neverson was born on November 28, 1984. So yes, that makes him a Sagittarius, and no, his zodiac sign doesn't matter. We just like to add this information to some of our videos for our RRG besties that are into that sort of thing. So anyway, he was raised by his mother, and although she got remarried at some point, Trey told my Central Oregon website that he grew up without a male figure in his life. He lived the life of a military child and moved around to different cities throughout the U.S. Since social media didn't exist at the time, it was hard for him to keep up with all the friends he left behind. He adopted the trait of most children who grow up in military families. He made friends effortlessly, but could drop them and move on just as quickly. He did the same when it came to relationships. He told the Las Vegas Review Journal that he loves very hard, but he can disconnect very quickly. He said, it's like a security blanket, like I can be done with this because you're so used to having to be done with it. It's something that puzzles me all the time. But he was also raised to respect women and treat them right. He told Cosmopolitan Magazine that his grandmother never let him walk through a door before her, and the sweetest thing his mom ever told him was that she raised him to be the kind of man she always wanted in her life. While in high school, aside from catching crabs when he was about 16 or 17, he also fell in love. He told Singer's Room website that his girlfriend cheated on him, and her actions tainted him for a very long time. You should be rocking the latest in purses, bracelets, and watches you're worth. Y'all know the song. After yeah, high school, he linked up yeah, with producer Troy Taylor and moved to New Jersey to pursue a career in the music industry. He worked as Troy's production assistant and wrote songs for Patti LaBelle and Aretha Franklin. Aretha was particularly drawn to him and was impressed by his songwriting capabilities. His first album, I Gotta Make It, was released on Atlantic Records in 2005. Not only did Aretha record a special intro for the album, but they also collaborated on the remix of the title track. The company's founder even called Trey the, quote, most promising R&B artist we have had since we started the company 60 years ago. 20-year-old Trey told the Las Vegas Review Journal he was so focused on his craft, but he also had to find the inner strength to guard him against harmful excess. However, he didn't mind policing himself to stay on the right track. He added that he valued his music career too much to throw it all away by being self-destructive. As he gained more popularity for his music, he increased the number of women on his roster. He told the YBF that whenever he stopped in a new city, he already had a woman he could call. In an interview with Baller Alert, he admitted that his max was three women at once because he wanted to make everyone in the equation feel special. It was clear that Trey was soaking up his newfound fame, and although he tried to keep himself in check, he fell into the trappings of fame. In November 2007, he was locked up in Springfield, Massachusetts for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. And then rumors started to emerge that his bedroom appetite was off the hinges, and he was giving it to both men and women, allegedly. A source reached out to Bossip website in 2010 and claimed Trey had allegedly been involved with men since about 2004. The source added that Trey had been in a seven-month relationship with an industry professional named Brandon Hines. The insider added, Trey is versatile and can be both a giver and receiver, depending on his partner. 
After Bossa ran their story, someone contacted the website and claimed the rumor was planted by Trey's ex-manager, Delonte Butta Murphy, in retaliation after Trey had recently fired him. However, Bossop stood ten toes down with its allegation. They wrote, Bossop can confirm that Delonte is not our source. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but we're sticking to our story. Trey released his fifth studio album, Chapter 5, in August 2012. After the rave reviews and number one chart position, Trey was thrown into the midst of a tragic event. On November 30, 2012, Trey and Miguel performed in Kansas City. A woman named Cassandra Perkins attended the concert with some friends. It was one of her first nights out after welcoming a baby with her boyfriend, Kansas City Chiefs linebacker, Javon Belcher. She returned that night to the home she shared with Javon, their daughter, and Javon's mom, and Javon came home the next morning around 7 a.m. According to a police report released, Javon had been out with his side chick. The media reported they got into a heated argument about their relationship and financial issues. However, Cassandra's friend reached out to a gossip website and claimed that Javon had, quote, jealous delusions and accused Cassandra of having an affair with Trey. On December 1, 2012, Javon fired nine shots at Cassandra and ended her life inside their home. His mom told authorities that he kissed her, Cassandra's lifeless body, and kissed the baby before driving to the Chiefs' stadium. He thanked the team's general manager and head coach for all they had done for him, and as he walked away, he pulled out a weapon and ended his life. Following the news of his alleged involvement with Cassandra, Trey took to his Twitter to send prayers to the families and added, As sad as it may be, it has nothing to do with me. Weeks later, Trey was at a gentleman's club when he threw money, and one of the crisp bills struck a woman in the eye. About a month later, TMZ reported he was locked up in connection with the incident and charged with misdemeanor assault. The charges were later dropped. Then came 2013, the year he allegedly met a woman named Savannah Waldrop. Savannah told Radar Online they hooked up on and off throughout the years, and then she got pregnant. Savannah claimed that after telling Trey the news about their new bundle of joy, he accused her of trying to ruin his life. She told Radar Online he paid her to terminate the pregnancy and urged her to go and, quote, get it over with. She went through with it and continued hooking up with Trey after the pregnancy was terminated. She alleged that he gave her $25,000 in cash over a period of five months to keep her quiet. During one exchange of cash, he asked to see her phone so he could delete their text messages. Savannah said that when she refused, he pulled her into the car and allegedly kept her hostage for two hours. Savannah told the online source, he was screaming and saying no one was ever going to see me again. He broke my phone and threw my license and credit cards out the window. He punched me in the ribs, locked the doors, and wouldn't let me out. We've barely covered the first few years of his career, and it's only the tip of the iceberg. Let's fast forward to December 2014. While on FaceTime with his best friend Floyd Mayweather, Earl Hayes discussed his wife Stephanie Mosley's alleged affair with Trey that happened two years prior. Sources told TMZ Earl forgave Stephanie, who worked as a backup dancer and star of VH1's Hit the Floor, for her alleged infidelities with Trey and other artists, like Chris Brown and Usher. However, the alleged affair she had with Trey was the one Earl just couldn't get over, and he allegedly brought up Trey's name frequently during their arguments. Sources claimed Floyd encouraged Earl to leave his wife, but instead Earl picked up a weapon, turned it on Stephanie, and took her life. Then he turned the weapon on himself and ended his life. Although Mr. Steal Your Girl is not directly responsible for anything that happened that day, online users noticed it was the second time that he was linked to a crime of passion. Trey expressed his condolences to Stephanie in this heartfelt tweet. Meanwhile, hours after witnessing the horrific crime on FaceTime, Floyd was seen courtside at the Clippers vs. Suns basketball game. But that's a story for another day. Trey had a whole set of new problems in October 2016. While performing in Detroit, he was told his set was running too long. The singer reportedly dared the venue to cut his mic off and promised to retaliate if they did. Well, they turned the mic off, and Trey went ham. According to TMZ, he, quote, started destroying everything in sight, hurling objects in the air. An officer that tried to subdue him was reportedly struck by a piece of debris Trey threw into the air. 
Well, he got locked up, and in his infamous mugshot obtained by TMZ, he can be seen holding up the middle finger. He pleaded guilty to disturbing the peace and was sentenced to 18 months probation. He had to pay restitution, attend anger management classes, and was ordered to submit to a substance test. By this point, people were aware of all the trouble he was getting into, but no one seemed to really care. He was still selling out shows and landing major collaborations with artists like Nicki Minaj and 2 Chainz. But in 2017, a celebrity finally spoke out about her frightening experience with Trey. Kiki Palmer went on the record to accuse Trey of tricking her into being in a music video for the song Pick Up the Phone featuring Fabulous. Kiki said it all went down at a party, and she was so afraid of Trey, she tried to hide in a closet to avoid being filmed, only to later find out that Trey and his friends had taken a video of her without her permission. In future interviews, she claimed the singer was guilty of using, quote, sexual intimidation to coerce her into being in the video. Trey denied her allegations in a tweet that read, Baby girl buggin'. Point blank period. Got my number, could have called, saw the cameras and the lights, heard action. And then Orlando Brown decided to throw his two cents into the mix. And Kiki, I'm not going to give you the umbot if you don't run around and stop talking about, uh, if you don't quit going around snitching like a thaw. I don't understand it. Everybody knows Trey Song sucks. He didn't want you. You know? But you and I both know, Kiki, that was the gag. December 2017 brought even more trouble for the singer. Two fans bought tickets to meet him in the VIP section of a Philly gentleman's club. In court docs, one of the women claimed Trey was being hostile and disrespectful to patrons all night but she still approached him afterward in the parking lot to snap a picture. But according to the woman, Trey smacked her phone out of her hand and her phone hit her in the face, breaking her glasses. She was demanding $50,000 in damages. Her cousin also sued Trey for mental anguish and injuries consistent with cosmetic disfigurement. Despite all the hot mess going on, Trey told Glamour magazine during a 2017 interview that he would love to have love in his life. However, he knew it was essential to prepare himself and make sure he was ready to receive it. He admitted that it was hard for him to be responsible for someone else's feelings. Two months later, he was back in the news. This time, it all went down during an NBA All-Star Weekend party in the Hollywood Hills. A woman claimed Trey got upset because she was talking to another man, and he allegedly put his hands on her during an argument. The woman also claims security had to pull him off of her. The woman then said she tried to get away and called an Uber, but Trey grabbed her phone and threw it down a hill. She said she had a second cell phone in her possession and he allegedly grabbed it and threw it down a hill as well. She somehow made it to a local hospital with minor injuries and the case was forwarded to the LA city attorney to see if charges would be brought against Trey. He turned himself in to authorities in March 2018 and posted a $50,000 bond. In a tweet, he said he was being lied on and falsely accused for someone's personal gain. The charges were eventually dropped after numerous witnesses gave statements to LAPD that contradicted the alleged victim's story. To celebrate, Trey hit up a nightclub with Tory Lanez. But the woman wasn't done. She filed a civil complaint against him, and they settled out of court. Then came the December 2016 concert in Detroit, when an officer accused Trey of punching him in the face. Months after things ended between him and Lori Harvey, Trey revealed in May 2019 that he was the father of a baby boy named Noah. On the child's first birthday, he identified the child's mother as Carol Cologne, the sister of Dave East's baby mama. During the pandemic, he took his talents to OnlyFans. He also made time to attend a Kansas City Chiefs game after getting into a physical altercation with officers in the stands. Trey got locked up. Prosecutors later declined to file charges. Four months later, a bartender filed a lawsuit after claiming Trey punched him during a Cardi B event. In November 2021, Trey was celebrating his 37th birthday in Las Vegas when witnesses spotted him and his entourage entering his hotel with a group of women. Basketball player and aspiring artist Dylan accused him of taking advantage of her inside his hotel suite. The charges were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. 
In February 2022, he was right back in the news. This time, a woman named Wahara Jeffries filed a $10 million lawsuit. The same day the news broke, another woman filed a lawsuit against Trey for taking advantage of her during one of his house parties that occurred in March 2016. She also demanded $20 million. The case was eventually dismissed. Are you tired yet? In October 2022, two people filed a report with the NYPD claiming Trey socked them in the face repeatedly at a bowling alley. Trey voluntarily turned himself in to authorities. That same year, hip-hop groupie Selena Powell and her friend Eliza went on a podcast. Selena alleged that Trey coerced her into doing some things and threw her phone off the balcony, while Eliza alleged that Trey relieved himself on her without her consent. Oddly enough, Corinne Steffens had a similar incident with Trey and claimed he also tried to relieve himself on her during her 38th birthday party. While the history of Trey's behavior has been known by the public for years, the singer has managed to dodge the law and rarely is held accountable. Maybe it's only a matter of time, or maybe we just tripping. Let us know your thoughts down below, and thanks for watching RRG.